Hello, Cricketers, and welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. I am wearing what I'm going to show you how to make in this tutorial. So go ahead and do the three things. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. My shirt says, Santa, why are you so judgy? That's the question of the hour. That's what we all want to know. Without further ado, let's head on over and look at the materials you will need in order to create a design just like this. And guess what, you guys? This design is free this week in design bundles. I will put a link down in the description below. Let's get started. The materials that I'll use for this project include my Cricut Explore Air 2. I'll use a 100% cotton gilded heavyweight um, heavyweight cotton shirt uh, that's by Gildan. I'll use dark fabric transfer paper. Okay, even though the shirt is white, I'm using dark fabric transfer paper. I'll use my green standard grip mat and this design that I purchased from Design Bundles. This is already printed on the, uh, the dark transfer paper and I'll show you my process for putting it all together. Okay, so let's head on over to Cricut Design Space. I am in Cricut Design Space and the first thing that I'll do is upload the file that I'm planning to use. This is a file that I purchased from Design Bundles. Uh, well, actually, no, it is free right now in within Design Bundles and I'll make sure to leave a link um, down below in the description box. So I'm going to navigate to my Design Bundles files. I'll click on the file that says Christmas Files. And I saved that one in a folder called Big Christmas Bundle because that's actually the name of the bundle. And it is this file that says, Dear Santa, why are you so judgy? The file that I will upload is the PNG file. So I'll just click on it and then click open. Okay, when it comes in, I have three options, simple, moderately complex or complex. I'm going to choose complex. I'm not going to do th anything to the file to erase it or clean it up. It's already clean. And I will click on the one that says print, then cut image, and I'll click upload. When it comes in, now it's uploaded, I'll click on it and I will add it to my canvas. When it's added to my canvas, I can see that it's very big. Right now, the view on my canvas is at 50%. What I'll do now is grab a shape from the shapes tools I'm loving the fact that Cricut Design Space has all these options for shapes. I will choose this square and I will resize it to um, 6.75 in width. I will unlock it right here and I will change the height to 9.25. The reason why I'm doing that is because that is the biggest amount of space that Cricut Design Space allows for print then cut files. Okay, now I have my template. What I'll also do is just change this to a pen. I just like to do it like that. You can keep yours black or gray or whatever color you choose. I'm gonna just change it to a pen. Okay, and then I will um, add an offset to this because when it starts to cut out, I don't want each letter to be cut out. So I don't want it to be like D E A. I want it to be all one piece and it'll be easier for me to move it from the transfer paper to my shirt. Okay. So I'm going to click on the image, click offset. The offset that I'm going to use is, um, 0 0.15. Okay. And when I click apply, the offset is going to turn black and that's okay. Oh, it didn't turn black. That's fine. That's perfect. Okay, I'll click apply. Oh, it did turn black. Okay, so I will change the color of the offset to white and I will select over all of it, the image plus the offset and I will flatten it. Okay, now that I have my image and my offset, I will resize this image to fit inside this box, which is my template. Okay. Because I know if it fits in this box, it, it, it is acceptable to Cricut Design Space. I am going to unlock this box and just kind of move it over a little bit. And I'm going to get it as big as I can, as big as Cricut Design Space will allow me to have it. Okay. Without getting that triangle over here. All right. So I can see the size and that's perfect. That's that's absolutely perfect for me. I don't need this template anymore. I can go ahead and turn it off or I can delete it. 
and I can just click on my image and click make it. Okay. And then everything I'll do now. So I'm going to actually go ahead and send this to my printer. So I'll click continue, send to printer. I'm actually sending this one to my Epson EcoTank 2760. I keep the ad bleed on. You can turn it off, turn it on. It's up to you. I am going to use system dialog that gives me my printer options. When that comes in, um, I will have my preferences. Okay. So I will click preferences and I am going to still select um, premium presentation paper mat and I want the quality to be high. And then I always click print preview and I click okay. Okay. And it's going to give me a preview of what this will look like because I'm using dark transfer paper. It is not mirrored. My design is not mirrored at all. Okay. If you're using light transfer paper, it is mirrored, but with dark it is not. So I can go ahead and click print and then I can show you um, what that looks like once I get it printed and then I'll, everything I'll do from here will be, so let me click print. I already have it printed, so I'm going to click no. All right. Now here I chose card stock for intricate cut settings. You don't have to choose that. That's the cut setting that I have chosen for my cut setting because I want everything else to be cut out inside in, in between the letters and you'll see all of that when it's back on camera. Otherwise you can choose printable iron on for darks. Um, that is also an appropriate cut setting for this material. Everything that I'll do here will be back on the camera. Okay, I have my image already printed out and I have it placed on my Cricut um, standard grip green mat. I will uh, load my mat into my Cricut Explore Air 2. And the cut setting, even though this is dark transfer paper, the cut setting that I'm going to use is the one that is card stock for intricate cuts. So I keep my dial set to custom and the cut setting that I'm going to choose is card stock for intricate cuts. The reason why I choose that one is because I like the way that it gives me a, a really good cut. It's gonna go around my image twice. I also like that. Once it gets going, I will speed this part up. The purpose of the offset was to keep this all together as one design. The scanning to make sure to see where to, where to cut it. Just thinking. Now, dark fabric transfer is different than light fabric transfer. The process is different. And since I'm using a heat press, I'm going to follow these instructions. The next thing it says for me to do is preheat the press to 375 degrees for 100% to 50% cotton blends. I'm using a 100% cotton shirt, so my heat press is set to 350 degrees. Okay, then it says press fabric for three to five, three to five seconds to release moisture and remove wrinkles. So I'm going to take my shirt over to my heat press and I'm going to press it for three to five seconds. And then I will remove my image from my standard grip mat and I will place it. I will make sure to remove the liner from the back and I'll place it on the shirt where I want it to go. But the first thing that I'm going to do is take this shirt over to my heat press and press it for three to five seconds. My heat press is ready. I am going to press my shirt to remove any moisture for three to five seconds. I did not mention in the intro, but I'm using my StarCraft 15 by 15 clamshell heat press. 
What I am going to do before I put my design on my shirt is I am going to fold my shirt in half just to get a crease down the middle so that I can know exactly where the middle of the shirt is and I don't make a mistake and have it too far over to the left or right. Um, so that's kind of a little trick of the trade that I learned from my sister. She taught me that. Just put a little crease down the middle. Okay, there should not be any moisture in this shirt at all. Look at that. Okay, and a good rule of thumb is to kind of just make sure your shirt is about like three finger widths the design uh, three finger widths down from the collar so The dark transfer paper does come with these sheets that go on top before you start to press it. Um, so I will place the sheet on top, making sure my design is clear and flat and exactly where I want it. And I will press it for 25 seconds. That's the recommended setting and we shall see. The heat press is beeping. Okay. What does it say? Ooh. <laughs> okay, it says the next set of directions say. Okay, peel liner from the back. We did that. Place printed transfer on top with the image side up. Cover completely with overlay paper. Set to medium pressure. Press for 25 seconds. Allow the fabric to cool. Then peel the overlay paper from the transfer using a smooth, even motion. So I will allow it to cool. I will take it actually from my heat press and I'll just put it right here on the side and I'll let it cool. Okay, I believe my design is completely cooled and I will remove the paper and voila, this is the finished product and I what? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love the way it turned out. It's so cute. I would definitely wear this. Okay, so if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week without fail. Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.